continue on now with uh, a <laughs> chat to Alec. Okay, Alec, you're out. You're out of the body. You're off the planet. And your adventures are really only just starting to begin. Can you take us through some of the things that you would like to mention now? I know they're in the book, but you know there are so many people who haven't read the book, obviously. Yes, well, to start off with, uh, we, were, we were traveling, what I was told, that we were traveling not only in, in time, but, but into another dimension. But the, the, the real catch to, to the story, which made uh, the whole thing sort of really hard to get your head around, is that this was an artificially dimension, artificial dimension that this race had constructed for themselves. And to to relate to that, you have to really hear their, their entire story, which mm. we can't do here. But they were aware of of an evolutionary an evolutionary process, which seems to be uh, prevalent right throughout our cosmos, our universe. And that is that um, when a species evolves it doesn't do it gradually in the darwinian theory but it just takes one step forward uh, of a monumental leap where it actually transposes the physical species into another new reality mm, right? yeah, we're talking about that at the moment aren't we You're calling it ascension yes it, it's it almost seems that seems almost too simple it, it, yeah it, seems to be that what, what this race was trying to do was artificially, if you like, accelerate that process. Right. And they obviously had the technology to do so. And and I think that, that there's a few covert groups on this planet that are a bit more au with that sort of technology than, than we would were, were ever led to believe. But mm. anyway, this group of people that I interacted with obviously had the technology. And they actually accelerated their whole race, planet, and their whole solar system, it would seem, into another reality, a less dense reality. It's amazing, isn't it? The process, the reasons were so that they could, they could have interstellar travel. Yeah. Um, it seems to be that you need to be able to transport yourself into a less dense reality to be able to, to travel... Mm. So raise the vibrations is another mm. way of maybe looking at it. I, you know, the technology is, is absolutely amazing and so obviously beyond my comprehension. This is They always seem to pick on the wrong people to take. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we talk about the, the density of life on Earth so that when we go back into spirit, uh, the spirit world is, is vibrating at a much higher level than we are. So perhaps they were looking at trying to be able to access that domain. Well, it seems to be, Barry. They, if you like, they artificial. They they engineered an artificial heaven. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that's that's that exactly way, what I'm thinking. So yeah. that they could interact with with our universe on a on a less dense rea- in a less dense reality, and so they could then travel faster than light and a lot of other things, mm. and uh, and so explore for themselves everything they had they desired to do. Yes, um, but I did touch a, a more sort of a real technology on their planet because that's where I, I was taken but of course I can't relate the density of that planet to earth but all I could tell you is that it felt real to me as solid as anything that we would have on planet earth mm. were, were there other similarities in this world I mean did it well, just well, look as if there was ground and rocks and mountains and mm, every, yes everything that, that you would expect to find here but the right. technology was absolutely stunningly beautiful Barry mm. that was the most that was the thing that lingered with me the most I think the technology was yes, stunningly beautiful well, the way how do you explain used, that I, I, I call it technology but it wasn't so much nuts and bolts it was, as it was an interaction of a biological technology um, where they sort of seem to be able to splice animal and vegetable materials together mm. to get living entities um, which served their, their needs and I, and I mean uh, an example of that would be to grow your own house. Yeah. They did. Yeah. Um, and the house then had a built-in ability to read your mind and you could command the house to do basically whatever you needed it to do. A, a bigger window, a smaller window, warmer temperature, whatever the case may be. Uh, insulation from the heat in the day and insulation from the cold at night. How one, I'm negotiating with a builder at the moment it doesn't work out. I wish it were just as easy. The house, would you mind just doing that? <laughs> Oh, wonderful. And of course, the costs 
seems to be negligible. I mean, the, 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 they didn't use money as we would understand it, and, and, and I guess you wouldn't really wouldn't need, need it. it. It's, it's like growing beans in your backyard. Exactly. Exactly. Why would you need money? I mean, what a wonderful... I mean, and the, um, the, the name of the place is called Haven, which is so close to heaven anyway, wasn't it? It was heaven with the E left out. Well, that's just... Uh, that's, an, that's another thing I really need to talk to you about, Barry, is the way they communicated. Um, it, was vib- it was a vibrational frequency, if you like, but it, the, the, but it was in the vibrations of colour. Um, I think our science is just starting to realise that, um, well, there's been colour therapy around in in alternate um, medicine for a long time now, and it's. I think it's just starting to get the credibility in the mainstream that it deserves. Mm. Obviously, yeah. our bodies relate to vibrational frequencies and resonances um, beautifully, mm. and it seems that that's the way they communicated and. and and a colourful vibrational resonance, and I, I can't explain it any better than that. But well, if, if you look at the word universe and break it down, uni meaning one and verse meaning song, everything is one song. Exactly so. They obviously, I mean, they were a long, long way ahead of us yeah. in their understanding of nature and the universe. And as you said before, you know, the and you write it uh, at length in the book about the interaction between uh, the, the human, the, um, the the animal world, the vegetable world, and and even the rocks, the, the makeup of the planet itself, that we are all one and we can interact with each other. Well, there's, there's, I mean, I think that Every atom in the universe is intelligent, or so I was told, and, and it seems to be that way. Trees are a lot more than just a lump of wood growing out of the ground. I think there's some sort of antenna that feeds the earth a lot of the cosmic energy. Um, and I think the human body being a walking aerial is doing exactly the same thing. And our DNA strand seems to be nothing more than a living um, aerial for cosmic energy and instructions on life. Uh, and I think we're starting to realise that. I was reading in the weekend about the Australian and US governments now getting together to plant trees instead of ripping them down. Is that right? Isn't well, that, that wonderful? A change. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> They're waking the, up. Yes, I, I think the trees are part of the life energy of the planet, and every time yes. you cut down a tree, you are, you are physically killing the planet, not just altering the, uh, the atmospheric um, behavioural patterns like rain. I mean, they call them rainforests for a reason, don't they, Barry? <laughs> That's a very good point, Alec. Yeah, very good. Anyway, back to Haven. And um, here you are in this amazing place with this everybody or everything seems to be sort of integrated. Um, the journey that you're getting there in this craft and everything, well, that's, that's a different story as well. I mean, there's just so much to talk about here. Where do, where do we pick it up from? <laughs> Well, the the spacecraft itself, Barry, was just another derivative of this uh, animal-plant mix. I I think that we're starting to realise, those that have studied the ET phenomenon in any detail, that everything's biological. Um, There's not so much nuts and bolts, there's not so much metal in any of these craft as maybe there is in some of the very primitive ones that they might be able to shoot down. But um, I think that the, the, the more high-tech races use a biological machinery and, yeah. uh, and it integrates with them. They are part of the machinery and I don't think the craft actually would operate without them. Yes, well, Stephen Greer talks about this too, and about operating through the thought and through the consciousness of the inhabitants of the vehicle. That's right. Well, the technology that, that I had anything to, 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 or I touched seem to be, they seem to meld with it, more so than I did. I was like an apprentice, I guess, so yeah. I, I probably wasn't qualified or even I wouldn't have been allowed to. But whenever they interacted with their craft, it's almost like they moulded into it. If, if, in the true sense, when they touched the control panels, I swear their hands became part of the control panels, and yeah. which you could only do with a biological uh, machinery. Exactly. I mean, we're so used to thinking from the word go, you know, from chariots, horse-driven chariots of thousands of years ago through to our uh, modern transportation that we get into something or climb onto something and it is totally separated from us. That's our concept of transport. And I think that's our limitation of transport too, isn't it? Well, I... They didn't eat anything, Barry. They only only drank a sort of a cosmic solution... (laughs) 
Yeah, um, yeah. I'm sure that whatever they, they took into their bodies w- w- would make them meld with their technology because it seemed to be part of the same same 